Okay, so unit six, lesson four, we are going to be solving radical equations. In this lesson, we won't be solving radical inequalities. We're just gonna focus on radical equations. So I've got some steps here that you can reference and follow, but I think this will help you kind of work through these problems. So the first thing you do is you isolate the radical meaning whatever root you have. If you have a square root, a cube root, you want to isolate that root. And then you raise each side of the equation to the same power to eliminate that radical. So if you have a square root, square both sides. If you have a cube root, cube both sides. If you have a sixth root, raise both sides to the sixth power. And then you solve it using, you know, techniques we've learned before. There's going to be some factoring. There's going to be some solving of equations where you just solve them like a linear equation. You isolate a variable. So moving to example one, I realize I didn't give you an equal sign there. For an equation, I just gave you an expression. So this equation in example one for part A should be set equal to four. Okay, should be set equal to four. So to solve this equation, like I said at the top, isolate the radical. So I'm going to isolate this square root of x plus 1, meaning I have to eliminate 2 from that side. So the way I eliminate 2 from that side is I divide by both, si I divide both sides by 2. So this becomes the square root of x plus 1 equals 2. Okay, so I have the, a radical isolated. And this is a square root. So the way I isolate the rat, or the way I continue to solve is I raise both sides to the second power. So this becomes x plus 1 equals 4. 2 squared is 4. And then I solve this using methods we've learned before. So in the end, x equals 3. So isolate the radical raise both sides to the same power, and then solve like we've been solving for years, okay, for the last few years. In the next equation, to isolate that radical, I would eliminate the negative 1 from both sides by adding 1 to both sides. So this is the cube root of 2x minus 9 equals 3. Raise both sides to the third, sorry, I wrote a 2 there. Raise both sides to the third power, since this is a cube root. So to undo the cube root, I cube both sides. So 2x minus 9 equals 3 to the third power is 27. And then I continue solving. I add 9 to both sides. This becomes 2x equals 36. x equals 18. So my solution is 18. So just some practice isolating the radical raising both sides to the same power, and then solving like we solve linear equations by isolating the variable. So take a minute to work through the guided practice. Pause the video. Take your time working through this. Be thoughtful. And then once you are ready, check your solutions with me. Okay, so for these three equations, number one, isolate the radical by adding 9 to both sides, then raise both sides to the third power since it's a cube root. I get 27. Second one, the radical is already isolated. So all I have to do is square both sides right off the bat and then subtract 25 from both sides to get negative 21. Third equation, isolate the radical by dividing both sides by 2. Raise both sides to the third power. x minus 3 is 8. x is 11. So moving ahead to example 2, using a real-life formula, with this example, it talks about in a hurricane that mean the average sustained wind velocity in meters per second, represented by V, can be modeled by this function. V of P equals 6.3 times the square root of 1013 minus P. And P is the air pressure at the center of the hurricane. So it says estimate the air pressure at the center of the hurricane when the mean sustained wind velocity is 54 and a half meters per second. So I am substituting this 54 and a half for V. 
or this V of P. So the way I'd set up this equation, 54.5 equals 6.3 times the square root of 1013 minus P. So I'm substituting in for velocity. I am solving for P pressure. And that unit, the units we're going to find it in, is called millibars. That's the way they measure, or units they measure pressure in, air pressure. So just like our other equations, except it's got decimals mainly. So to solve this, isolate the radical, divide both sides by 6.3. So 54 and a half divided by 6.3. I'm going to have to use a calculator for that one. 54.5 divided by 6.3 is a really long decimal, okay? So I'm going to decide it's 8.6507935 or 3651. I'm going to round that to just two decimal places. 8.65 equals the square root of 1013 minus P. So what I did was I divided 54.5 by 6.3. I left that number in the calculator. And I'm going to take that number literally and just square it in my calculator. And I'm going to get 78 point, or sorry, 74, 74.84. That's going to equal 1013 minus P. So I'm going to rewrite that so I have room to solve. And then I'm going to solve that equation. Subtract 1013 from both sides. I get negative 938.16 equals negative P. So really P equals positive 938.16. And that's in what's called millibars. Okay. So this is the first half of the video, first half of the lesson. So so you're just going to get a little bit of practice solving simpler equations like this. And then we will um, do the rest of this lesson as a class because the factoring part, I really want to make sure I go over with you guys so you understand what I'm talking about better. I have more time to answer questions there. But this, I feel like, is something I can explain and you guys, guys can understand with this video.